Okay, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over how to use, well, I guess for me it'll be Jungle Scout to analyze your competitor's sales. This is a software I've been using for years. I love this software and it's super helpful. So we're going to be going over how to use this to check revenue, check monthly sales. Those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, analyze markets. This will be video part six in the free Amazon course. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Let's jump right into it. All right guys, here we are. So we got Jungle Scout pulled open. Um, we're gonna be using our same example product from yesterday. Um, now there could be a lot, of, a lot of things I don't know that I don't know about this market. We're strictly using this as an example for the course right now. Um, and going over analyzation will be in a later video. So we'll get into why I would pick something in just what you should be looking out for. But today is gonna to be strictly about how to use this software and more specifically, how to use it to analyze your competitor's sales. Um, so now this is gonna be more of a beginner video, but it is part of the free Amazon course. So um, if you're more advanced, maybe this isn't for you, but if you're just getting started, this would be a great place to start off. So Jungle Scout is a software. Um, you could either get it, there's a couple different versions. It could be anywhere from the range to 30 to $60 Per month and I do have a link down in the description for it so if you're new here and you haven't gotten Jungle Scout yet you're thinking about selling on Amazon it is the oldest and most renowned product research tool so I would pick that up that'd be my first recommendation that's you know if you want to follow along that's definitely going to be something you'll need the Jungle Scout extension bang you can see it right there so you need to be using Chrome first of all I'll just start with the basics right so it's a Chrome extension if you're using Safari or you're using uh, you know, Microsoft Edge, it's not going to load Firefox. None of those um, will work. You have to use Chrome. So download Google Chrome first. If you haven't already, that's entirely free. Um, then in the Chrome Web App Store, you're gonna go um, look for Jungle Scout. So we could actually just do that. Chrome Web Store. Cool. Um, and then once you're in here, you would search this. Um, you would get Jungle Scout first, but you know, obviously I don't have to tell you to search Jungle Scout and go get the software. Um, you could go like this, Jungle Scout. Um, for, for any reason whatsoever, if you lost the extension or anything, um, you'll see it's right here, Jungle Scout extension, and I already have it, or else it would say add to Chrome, and I have the pro one, the light one, I don't even know if you could get that anymore. Um, cool. So now that you know how to get it, and we know where it is, we're going to click on that, and it's only going to work on Amazon's sales pages. Cool, so now that we've landed on a market, the best place to pull this software up is right when you search the broadest key term. Now, what is a broad key term? Broad key terms mean uh, means the fewest possible words you can use to get to the same market. Um, so, for instance, I wouldn't want to type storm glass weather predictor large. See how we're using a five-word phrase here when it's unnecessary. Yes, it got us here, but could we get to this exact same page with less words? Let's see, if we took off large, does it get us there? Yep, it still gets us there. If we took off predictor, does it get us there? Still gets us there. And then if we took off weather, does it still get us there? Still gets us there. But now if we took off glass, does it get us there? No. So that is the broadest term we can use. And the reason we're using such a broad search term not broad enough that it doesn't bring us to the right product, but broad enough that it does bring us to the right product is because if I were to search, um, you know, storm glass, weather predictor, large, clear thing, and then I pulled up Jungle Scout, I'm gonna be seeing different results. The way that Amazon works is that your competitors will be ranking for these key phrases based on how many sales they're getting. Um, so if someone's getting sales from that, maybe they might be the 50th seller here um, for the broad key term, but they might be showing up first for such a long, um, those are called um, long end keywords or long end phrases. So once you have your search term all settled out, um, a great way you can actually um, do is use a keyword research tool. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about yet, don't worry about it, um, but we'll get into that in the future. You would wanna go actually see what the search volume is and then use the highest searched one that still gets you there. Cool, so now we've gone over that. Let's pull up Jungle Scout here. Awesome, so the first thing that I like to look at is obviously demand, right? So demand, you could break down into two parts. So there's gonna be monthly sales and there's also gonna be monthly revenue. Now there'd be no way for you to get this information. Um, 
I guess I can't say no way. You could, if you knew how to reverse engineer sales rank and go download the list of what sales rank equals what, you could get it. Um, but as a beginner, you probably have no idea what I just said. So essentially, this is a necessity if you want to see this really efficiently. If I wanted to get a list this big, um, reverse engineering sales rank, it would take me hours. So monthly sales is the first thing I look at. I used to look at revenue, but monthly sales are direct conversions. So what that means is someone landed on one of these Amazon pages and paid for a product. Right, now these are going to vary. These are going to be accurate up to about 10% off. So they're incredibly accurate, right? 90% accuracy here um, is amazing. So these are predictions over a 30 day span, but they can be deadly accurate. So I wouldn't be afraid to use what this is saying time and time again, Amazon sellers like myself and many others use tools like these to predict demand and they're almost always right. So I'm going to be looking at monthly sales first, like I said, instead of revenue, because right, we could have someone just selling a thousand dollar product and they sell 30 of them um, and they're doing, you know, well, not 60, they have to sell 60 of them. Um, but you know what I mean, right? So I like to look at demand because it's where are the eyeballs, where are people going, who's getting the most sales. That means that they might have hit a sweet spot with either reviews or good reviews or pricing or they have a great first picture and everyone else doesn't. So the first thing that I'm going to look at is monthly sales. Then I'm going to go look over at monthly revenue. Now the monthly revenue is of course just going to be that monthly sales multiplied by the price of the product to get a revenue per month. And that is of course sales revenue. There will be fees taken out of that. Your product costs will be deducted from that obviously on your end. Um, so that's not going to be profit, but revenue is a great thing to go by, right? Because if I could get a product doing five, 10, 15, $20,000 per month in revenue, um, it's up to me to keep my inventory cost low and make sure that I went into a category where those fees aren't going to be crushing me. So cool. We've looked over the monthly sales. We've looked over the monthly revenue. The next thing I'm going to look at is called the revenue to review ratio. So what that means is I want to see a larger number of top competitors all sustaining a high revenue in comparison to their number of reviews. So I wouldn't want to see that this guy with 145 reviews has all of the sales and everyone else is struggling to do numbers. So maybe everyone else is doing one to 4,000 a month and this guy is doing 30,000 a month. That's never a good thing to see. As soon as you see that, I would maybe study why he's doing so well. Um, but most of that time, that means he's kind of dominating that market. He or she or said business entity. Um, cool. And then that's, that's kind of obvious. That's how you would judge demand. And then the thing that I'm huge about is looking into, well, what are those reviews saying? Right? So you could stop there, but that's not a huge indicator. Let's look over here and look at the rating. So why is someone with three and a half stars doing so good? We would have to go find that out. Um, and a lot of times you'll see a rating of three and a half stars, but they have four stars showing. Um, so you want to go read those reviews, figure out what people don't like. And then of course, as we get into further along in this free course, we'll go over differentiation, and how to go about using your knowledge of a target audience to your advantage. Cool. And then the last thing would be, well, not really the last thing we've talked about a little bit, but the price, right? So using the price, when I'm analyzing a jungle scout screenshot like this, um, I want to make sure that there's a consistently like a balanced average price, right? So it's not like one guy's doing 50, one guy's doing 10, and they're all similar products. And then everyone's sprinkled throughout there and there's 100 people at 12.99. Um, this looks really good because it looks like everyone is getting away with selling in that 20 to $35 range, which is perfect. That's right where you wanna be. You'll be able to lock in a secure 10, 12, $15 profit if you're lucky. Um, and then you don't have to sell as many units to make as much profit, which is great. Um, it's probably harder to sell, you know, a hundred products at a $1 profit per day than it is to sell 10 at a $10 profit or five at a $20 profit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. The pro of going lower in an average price is that generally this is reflective of how much it's going to cost to source. So if I were to come into a market and see that the average prices were, you know, $40 and no one's selling lower than that, I'm starting to think, okay, that must cost 10, 12, $15 to source.
generally there's going to be a three to five x markup on inventory. Um, so if I could, you know, sell it for twenty, I'm probably getting that product for four dollars, three fifty, four fifty, five fifty, right around that range. Um, that ratio holds up pretty well. Cool. So I hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This was part six in our ongoing free Amazon FBA course right here on YouTube. If you did, be sure to go down and leave me a comment, like, and subscribe. Sometimes I forget to uh, say those things. So we're doing great, guys. Almost 11,000 subs at the time that I'm making this video. Maybe it's more when you're watching. Hopefully not less. Um, but if it is, who cares? <laughs> I'm going to keep making the videos anyway. So guys, hopefully you're having a great hump day. It is Wednesday. So have a great rest of your week. I'll see you back here tomorrow for day number seven of the free Amazon FBA course. Thanks so much. Bye.